Just downstream of the Danville Riverside River Bridge uh, was the site of a Native American village in the town of what we call Danville. Uh, it was right at what's called Crick's Mouth. This is where Mahoning Creek comes into the Susquehanna River. And it's unknown uh, what the historic names of this village were, but uh, evidence is clear that humans have lived here, uh, hunted here, raised families, grown food here for thousands of years. What makes the site uh, very interesting to me and a lot of other local folks is the fact that there is still an eel dam or eel weir out in the Susquehanna River. And in just a moment, we'll head out that way and you can see it. That's Bald Top Mountain. That's the F.Q. Hartman complex. There's the river bridge. And that V in the river is what I want you to look at. The V that you see is made by humans stacking rocks in, in the shape of a V. And I'll explain the mechanism in a moment. But these have been in, in use for thousands of years here in the United States, in America. The oldest that I'm aware of was 6,000 years old. It's been radiocarbon dated. Uh, a piece of wood came out of a structure like this in a river in Maine, and it was radiocarbon dated to be almost 6,000 years old. So Native Americans built these um, here in Danville easily, I, I would say thousands of years ago, and it was used to trap eels. Eels are a fish. They spend their adult life in the freshwater rivers, but when it's time to go downstream to the ocean to reproduce, they'd come down by the millions every fall. Now here's a picture from the Delaware River where they still have eels, and this uh, is a, an active trap. And this way is, the way this works is the eels come down river, they are funneled into that V, and then they go up into the, the wooden trap and they're, they're caught. So there would have been a wooden structure like that right there in our eel dam. It's just amazing that the structure still stands. I mean, this is thousands of years old, it's been hit with flood after flood, and yet the rocks are still there. I doubt it would still function as an eel dam, uh, but you can still see the structure. What's amazing to consider is the people who built this had to be extremely technologically advanced. I mean, first of all, they had to understand that the, the eels had this life pattern, this living in the freshwater streams, but then heading down the river by the millions every fall. And you have to be pretty in tune with the environment to know that there's a migration like that happening, considering it's happening underwater. So that was amazing innovation number one, is just realizing that, that biorhythm, so to speak. The second thing is manipulating the environment to make this dam. It may not look very big, but it's enormous. In fact, if you measure it out linearly, it's about the length of the, the modern day river bridge that connects Danville to Riverside, about a quarter of a mile long. I like this shot too, because what you see on the bottom of the river, those stripes, that's actually bedrock. Uh, the river in this place cuts right down to the bedrock of our local shales and sandstones. It's really a cool spot. In other words, they picked a good, good location for this because some of those bedrock shoals on the left side of the screen here created a natural dam already. And so what they did is they added on to that. So the eels would have come down in the fall just like the direction that this video shows. They would have come downstream and they would have hit the, the walls of the dam and been funneled to the V where the, the weir or the trap would have been. It's incredible how much uh, food could be caught using one of these. In the 1800s, the eel dams were still in use. And here in Danville, I've seen uh, records of them catching hundreds of pounds of fish per day in the prime season, uh, which did sometimes only run a, a few weeks, but still it's a lot of calories coming down the river. So just keep in mind that this is right here in our backyard. It's 1,500 years older than the pyramids of Egypt. And as far as I know, it has no legal protection or recognition and it's just amazing to me that there is this possibly 6,000-year-old structure right here in our backyard in the Susquehanna River. Um, there's still plenty of fish. Unfortunately, they aren't eels. The eels are no longer able to come up the river because of other dams that are on down the stream from us. So we took a float today down the river and stopped at what a lot of locals call the second elephant rock. Uh, this is out from Crick's Mouth. And as my boys and my nephew went out and checked it out, they saw some real big catfish hanging out below the, uh, the rock. And here you can see those catfish. All the drone footage is by my son Luke, he's really a great drone pilot. At least two catfish, I'm not sure what that third guy is. And so I had to take my chances and get a, get a hook in the water and get a line in the water and I lucked out and caught a small little rock bass but it was just pretty special to be doing this at a site where humans have been catching fish for thousands of years.
And yes, that is a fishing license on my hat. <laughs> and back to his friends he goes. I let him go. So there it is, the origins of the Danville Riverside Eel Dam. It's still there, and it's right out from Crick's Mouth. And uh, by all means, get out there and enjoy it. It's really a local treasure.